everybody, once again, it's Randy Faust uh, from Compelling for Christ Public Ministry. Um, we've been covering the Old Testament lately. Um, I'm going to get into the New Testament today. I got an email uh, from a from a lady. Uh, she mentioned something about prayer and the messages. Um, and just to let y'all know, I pray before I preach these things. Um, I just don't do it on the on the video because it just takes you know too much time, and I'm just trying to cram these into ten minutes. Uh, just keep them short and sweet. Uh, so if you want to pause, pray, you know, do what you got to do. I'd appreciate it. Uh, can't never pray too much, amen. So today we're going to talk about a, um, a thing called the tongue. Um, I'm going to start reading. We're going to be in the book of James. We're going to be in chapter 3. Uh, once again, I want to reiterate, uh, this is not church. Um, as a born-again believer, you need to find you a good Bible-believing uh, local church. Um, it's important. Um Bible says to forsake not the assembling of yourselves together. You need to get with fellow believers of like faith uh, that believe the truth, the Bible, the King James Bible. I uh, can't reiterate that enough. Uh, get somewhere where they're preaching the whole counsel of God out of the good, out of the Bible, the Word of God. Bible says uh, uh, the Word of God is true, and and uh, we need to stick with the true Word of God. All right, so we're going to begin reading in uh, James chapter three, verse one. Bible says, "My brethren." Be not many masters, knowing that we shall receive the greater condemnation. For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man, and able also to bridle the whole body. Behold, we put bits in the horses' mouths, that they may obey us, and we turn about their whole body. Behold also the ships, which though they be so great, are and driven of fierce winds, yet are they not turned about with very small with a very small helm whithsoever the governor listeth. Even so, the tongue, um, it's comparing the tongue here, is a little member and boasteth great things. Behold how great a matter the, of little fire kindleth. Amen. Uh, that's verse 5 going to verse 6 here. Uh, the Bible says this in verse 6, And the tongue is a fire and a word of iniquity, so is the tongue among our members, that it, be, that it defileth the whole body and setteth, setteth on fire the course of the nature. A course of nature, and it is set on fire of hell. For every kind of beast, and of birds, and of serpents, and of things in the sea is tamed, and hath been tamed of mankind. But the tongue can no man tame. It is an unruly evil, full of deadly poison. Pretty rough there, huh? We all got one of those. How about that? Therewith we bless, therewith bless we God, even the Father, and therewith curse we men which are made after the similitude of God. Out of the same mouth proceedeth blessings and cursings. My brethren, these things ought not to be. Amen. Um, something about the tongue, and we read it here. Um, everybody always says, uh, you know, uh, sticks and stones may uh, break my bones, but names will never hurt me. Um, we like to believe that. But the bottom line is this, the tongue can hurt, amen? Uh, the Bible in this scripture is comparing the tongue to some things that are, 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 are pretty uh, interesting. Um, it talks about a horse. Um, anybody, I'm not a horseman, I don't know much about horses, but I know this much, when they put the bridle in the mouth, um, they're able to steer that horse. They're able to move the horse to the left, to the right, hold it, uh, get it to run, get it to stop, jump, do what it needs to do. Um, like I said, I'm no expert on that, but I do know this much. If you can bridle a horse and steer him, the Bible compares that to a tongue. And if you can bridle your tongue, the Bible says this in uh, verse 2. It says, For in many things we offend all. If any man offend not in word, the same is a perfect man and able to bridle the whole body. So if you can control your tongue, the Bible says you can control your whole body. Um, your tongue will steer you. It will steer you in the wrong direction. And that's what we're going to talk about today. Um, it talks about ships. Now, I'm a Navy um, veteran and... One thing that I know, the ships are huge, and the helm or the, the little rudder that steers them isn't so big compared to the whole ship, yet it's able to control that ship, amen. Once again, if you can control your tongue, amen, the Bible says that you can control your whole body. Um, we've got wild animals out there that man's been able to tame, yet he cannot tame his tongue, amen. The Bible says in the, in the book of Psalms, it gives us some uh, things about what the tongue is in, through Psalms and Proverbs. 
Um, the tongue is mentioned 129 times in the King James Bible, in 126 verses, amen. So the Bible has something to say about the tongue. And more often than not, it's a negative thing, amen. In the book of Psalms 120 verse 2, the Bible says it is deceitful, amen. It's a deceitful tongue. It also says in Zephaniah 3.13, uh, the Bible says in Proverbs 6.17, it is lying. Your tongue is a lying tongue. The Bible says in 6.24, it's flattering. Now, that sounds good. Sound a flattering tongue, amen. You say nice things. But in all reality, that scripture is not referring to something good. It's referring to a harlot that's steering a man astray by telling him sweet things, amen, itching his ears. Uh, the Bible says in... Uh, uh, Proverbs 10.31, that the tongue is froward. 17.4, uh, it's naughty. Um, it says in uh, uh, Proverbs 17.20, um, it's perverse, amen. It says it's backbiting in 25.23. Those are just a few scriptures, amen, that talk about man's tongue. It is a wicked thing. But I'm here to tell you something today. Even though the Bible says it's a little member, it can do great damage, amen. It can damage a person's life. It can damage a person's testimony. And it most absolutely can damage a, damage a person's friend. We've got to be careful with our tongue, my Christian friend. We've got to be careful with our tongue, even if you're a lost person out there. You have to be careful with your tongue, because it will hurt people. Sticks and stones may break my bones, but names will hurt you, amen. People start gossiping. People talk, start talking behind, bad behind your back. It'll bother you, amen. And I've watched gossip destroy people's lives. You say, oh, it ought not to be so. Let somebody gossip about you. Let somebody gossip about your family, and see what it does. See the bonds that it breaks. See the division that it causes, amen. When people you love start believing lies that are told about you or lies that are told about your family. It will cause big problems, amen. It is fierce and it's like a fire. A little bitty fire, just one match can catch a house on fire. Just a little thing out of that tongue can get your whole body in danger, amen. Uh, but there is something else I want to talk about the tongue, amen. Although the tongue is all these bad things, the Bible says that the tongue could be a confessing tongue. It says in Romans chapter 14, verse 11, it says this, For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. Amen. Your tongue one day is going to confess that there is a God. Your tongue one day is going to confess that God is Lord, that Jesus is Lord. And if it does not do it on this side of heaven, amen, it will do it again on the other side of death. And that's when God will cast non-believers into a lake of fire. The Bible says that every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess, amen. The Bible says, whosoever was not found written in the Lamb's book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Hell is too long, my friend, to let the tongue not confess Jesus on this side of heaven and cause you to go to hell, amen. The Bible says in Romans chapter 10, I'm going to, I'm going to turn there real quick. Um, it's very important that you listen to this. i got two minutes to say this, friend. If you are lost out there and you are dying... Your tongue is what's going to cause you to either go to heaven or go to hell. Here's what the Bible says. The Bible says, But what saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth and in thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach. Amen. I'm preaching faith. Salvation by faith in Jesus Christ and the work he done on that cross through his blood. The Bible says this, That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, shalt believe in thine heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, but with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Listen to me. If you want to be saved, if you want to go to heaven, you've got to believe, number one, in your heart that Jesus Christ died on that cross for your sin. Your sin put him there. Amen. Not your neighbor's sin. Not your, your brother's sin, not your sister's sin, not your mom, your dad's sin, not some enemy's sin. You're not better off or worse off than anybody else, but your sin, your sin put Jesus Christ on the cross. And the Bible says when you believe that and you've got that in your heart, you confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ is Lord. Jesus Christ can save your soul. And the Bible says that when you repent of that, you repent of your unbelief, you will be saved. Amen. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. Amen. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. The Bible says, that for with the heart man believes unto righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto his salvation. For what the scriptures, for the scriptures say, whosoever believe on him shall not be ashamed. Amen. The Bible is very clear, my friend. Ask Jesus to save your soul today. Bow down and say, Lord, I'm a sinner. Lord, I need to be saved. Lord, I trust in your work on the cross. I believe that your blood shed was shed on that cross for my sin. As soon as you do that and you confess and there's repentance, true repentance in your heart, my friend, God will save you, amen. He said if you believe it in your heart, he will give you repentance. And when he gives you repentance and you make that confession, thus you will be saved, amen. That's all I got today. The tongue's a wicked thing. Don't let it cause you to go to hell, amen.